and welcome to church tonight. It's Wednesday night, time for our Bible study, prayer time tonight, and uh, time for Patch Club again. And So uh, glad you're here tonight. Let's take our songbook. Here's a good song we'll get started with, number two. Number two, if you would find that in your hymnal, then let's all stand and we'll sing glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name, there to my heart was the blood applied. saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood of fountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul at the same your speed plunge in today and be made complete glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood of life and we'll get started tonight. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary tonight. And Lord, we sang in that song, There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. And we are thankful for that. Lord, we pray tonight as we meet that you would meet with us. And Lord, I am so thankful that we have Wednesday night church, a time to come in the middle of the week and Kind of get our batteries recharged, and Lord, we get another chance to meet together and open up your word and study it. Lord, I pray you give us understanding, and I pray that, uh, Lord, you would just uh, bless the Patch Club and just everything that's done tonight, Lord, may it be pleasing to you and bring honor to your name. We ask these things now in Christ's name, amen. You can be seated. We're going to have uh, the young folks to sing a song that they've been learning in Patch Club tonight, as well as quoting their uh, memory verse they've been working on, and so we look forward to that. So we'll do that at this time, so uh, let's go ahead, and young people, let's go ahead and stand, and uh, let's come on up, and we'll get ready to uh, do our song.
Very good, young people. That's a great song. That's a good song for all of us. Amen. Yeah. Keep that servant's heart and uh, appreciate that. We'll let you all go ahead and uh, be dismissed now so you can stand and follow Miss Miller out. <clears throat> and while they're heading out, does anyone need a prayer card tonight to fill out? Everybody got those? All right, we'll fill those out, collect those here in just a little while. Well, let's go over just a quick couple of announcements. And I um, want to say uh, again, uh, especially because of today being the holiday, a happy Veterans Day uh, to our veterans here again. We sure appreciate uh, you all. I <coughs> tried to send out quite a few text messages today to all the folks that I know that served our military and and I sent quite a few text messages out and I said uh, uh, I said you you are the true heroes and veterans sure are and I appreciate your service very much it's a blessing and so I wanted to say that again tonight happy veterans day there are a few bookmarks left on the back table uh, if if you know someone that's a veteran you want to give them a bookmark from our church uh, that would be great to do and that you're welcome to take those uh, just uh, normal announcements but I um, want to mention these real quick Sunday night delight on November 22nd we'll have just a fellowship after the evening service and uh, just a, a dessert fellowship and we'll enjoy time together and then um, our midweek service that week on Tuesday night, the 24th, and our Chris, couple Christmas parties, uh, and there'll probably be more, uh, perhaps, different Sunday school classes having things, but the Dorcas class has theirs on Saturday the 5th, and then the church Christmas banquet on December the 6th, Sunday night at 5 o'clock, and uh, so be thinking about those, and we'll, uh, Miss Dorothy will have a sign-up sheet for the Christmas banquet and we'll do kind of what we traditionally do with the carry-in dinner and uh, so just be thinking about that and, and get all that uh, are you gonna bring your stuffing or dressing this year because if you're not I'm not coming okay so <laughs> boy that's good stuff that's worth the uh, the trip for sure you could eat a meal just of that uh, but it's gonna be a good banquet uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm already making preparations for it, some games and, and giveaways and things, and look forward to that. And, uh, and then keep in mind, uh, I'll get with Miss Twitchell, and maybe Sunday we'll have some more final uh, details, uh, but we'll probably put together a couple Thanksgiving baskets again this year, uh, maybe two or three, and uh, usually uh, I think she gets help from folks to uh, help fill those baskets. The church will provide uh, the turkeys, and uh, get that that'll be a blessing as well and then I want you to continue praying for uh, Miss Rachel and uh, she's still there in the hospital and uh, get a chance to send her a note we uh, sent her a card from the church a, m a lot of folks signed that uh, but send her a note there and I know that would that would help her and be a blessing and then uh, let's see we've got um, the take the Bible reading challenge uh, I'll brag on my son a little bit later but Dylan's been uh, reading his Bible every single day he's been reading at nighttime his Proverbs of the day on his own without asking uh, every time we say it's time to uh, to get in bed he gets up there the lamps turned on and he's reading his Bible he gets his notebook out and he asked the other day he said dad he said guess how many verses I've read this month I said I don't know a thousand and then he said a thousand and twenty verses already this month he'd been I guess figuring up the amount of verses he'd been reading so uh, killing two birds with one stone reading and arithmetic all in one and uh, that was a blessing but uh, encourage you to do that and that that'll go through uh, till next Sunday the 15th that was our 30-day challenge and uh, I'm gonna ask for a show of hands on Sunday how many of you read the book of Proverbs and and that'll be an encouragement I know and so I want to mention that one more time. All right, I think that's uh, all the announcements. So we're going to uh, collect our prayer cards here.
and sing one more song. So, uh, Brother Carol, if you want to make your way around and uh, collect those prayer cards, and let's sing one more song tonight. And uh, feel like we're a little bit early, but we're we're close to right on time. I keep looking over at the clock, and it is not working, and so it's stuck over there. So I'll have to look at my watch here, but uh, we'll get right for the Bible study here. Let's sing page 248, 248, and while uh, you're turning there, uh, think about this song, Now I Belong to Jesus, and uh, let's sing it out here, page 248. <clears throat> Jesus, my Lord, will love forever from him no power of evil can sever he gave his life to ransom my soul now I belong to him now I belong to Jesus Jesus belongs to Once I was lost in sin, degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him, and now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to eternity joy floods my soul for Jesus has saved me freed me from sin that long had enslaved me his precious blood he gave to redeem now I belong to him now good we have the new prayer list out for the month <clears throat> and so uh, if you haven't gotten one of those make sure you grab one and you'll be able to have that ready to fill out and keep up with this month and if you have anything that, uh, that needs taken off let me know we I got behind a month and so I was really really struggling to get everything <clears throat> to fit in the prayer bulletin this month and I did make some changes to it and uh, inadvertently I may have taken something off and it needs to be put back on or maybe there's something on you say that can be taken off and um, we try to keep it concise uh, but, but at the same time uh, I always feel bad taking something off but if it doesn't get mentioned you know within a month's period of time then most of the time I'm going to take it off, unless it's an ongoing uh, need, and there's many of those as well. And so just look that over and uh, let me know after a while. Well, let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of Ruth. Turn to the book of Ruth. This is our seventh study, our seventh lesson here in the book of Ruth, and it's been a just a joy to study this book and to go through it, and we're getting closer to the halfway point. There's just, uh, just a few chapters in this book, four chapters, and I will get through uh, most of chapter two uh, today, and it's been a great study. So we'll pick up in verse number 17. 
Ruth chapter 2 and verse number 17. Now this is speaking of Ruth. So she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead, Naomi said unto her, <coughs> excuse me, this man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabitess said, he, shall, uh, he said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they may... Uh, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. So we'll go through this portion of scripture tonight and we'll finish out this thought that we started a couple weeks ago. Three godly characteristics of growing Christians. And this is the third part and the final part of that and we'll get into it tonight. Father, we pray now as we get to the Bible study that you would, Lord, help us. We understand that this is a, uh, that the Word of God is a living book. And Father, we understand that it's the Holy Spirit that can give us understanding and give us guidance as we study it. So Lord, we pray now that you would, uh, Lord, help these, uh, th these black and white pages tonight to uh, paint a beautiful picture and color of your love for us and the love that Boaz had for Ruth. Lord, I pray that I could be clear and concise with the message, and I would have that you would have me say exactly what we need tonight. We ask these things again in Christ's name. Amen. Well, again, just by way of review, we understand that the book of Ruth takes place during the harvest time. It starts off in chapter 1 at the beginning of the harvest. And uh, chapter 2, rather, I said the book of Ruth, these first two chapters, uh, uh, the end of chapter 2 uh, ends the barley harvest. We just read here in verse 23, So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest. So chapters 1 and 2 deal with the harvest time. We find three principles or three great words of the Christian life that are illustrated here in chapter 2. And um, these are the three uh, just most familiar words. Uh, matter of fact, I believe these words are hanging in the hallway as part of the decorations out there. Uh, but we find them in the New Testament. We find them mentioned in Ruth chapter 2. And the first word is faith. And then the second word is love, and we'll look at the third word tonight um, here in just a moment. Let's look at uh, just some things by way of, of review, because it's going to go along with uh, the word that we're going to talk about tonight. And let's look at back at chapter 1, and notice some things about Naomi. Again, she is the mother-in-law. Uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and give you the third word, and that will, that will help to play into these verses that we read. And tonight we're going to talk about the hope of Naomi. The hope of Naomi. We, we talked about the faith of Ruth. We talked about the love of Boaz. Tonight we're going to talk about the hope of Naomi. Those, there's those three words, faith, hope, love. Uh, we used to sing a, a fun a uh, uh, fun song growing up in junior church, uh, Faith, Hope, Love, You Need All Three. Uh, I won't sing it tonight, but it's kind of a silly song. But those are three important words in the Christian life. 
and no doubt three godly characteristics that a growing Christian will have. Now, as we think about it, aren't those three words sometimes difficult to live out? Our faith. They're simple words, aren't they? Faith. Uh, love is, is another difficult one sometimes. And we're going to look at the third one, hope tonight, the hope of Naomi. But let's look at some of Naomi's, uh, Naomi's past and be reminded of, of her difficult situation that she had been through. Uh, we find here in chapter 1 and verse number 3, the Bible says, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. So, first of all, we see her in her past, she lost her husband. Now, that's a difficult thing to overcome. Uh, as I look around the room tonight, uh, several of the ladies here have lost their husbands. That's an amazing thing when I think about uh, just the people that I know and the, the church members in this church and, and other churches I've been a part at. It, it seems like, at least in my perspective and, and me figuring things up in my mind, that it's the husbands that often die before the wives. Lots of widows uh, I know I know a lot more widows than widowers, I'll put it that way. And, uh, you know, we see Naomi lost her husband. Difficult time, difficult, uh, difficult, uh, just dealing with, she was already in a famine, she was already in a strange place, uh, and then her husband dies. Can you imagine? And, and I want to paint a picture here of her past tonight to understand the hope that we're going to talk about in a moment. Now, not only did her husband die, she lost her two sons. Boy, can you imagine that? It says in verse 5, And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. So she loses her husband, Elimelech. Now she loses both of her boys. Just a few years ago, I shared this prayer request, but I'll mention it again for sake of this story. We had some church friends that we uh, knew from church in Kentucky. And uh, th this was a good family in, in the church, a Spanish family. He was very involved in the Spanish ministry of the church there. And they were on a trip down in Texas. And they were in a very uh, tragic car accident. And the father passed away in the accident they were a family of of uh, i believe seven do the math real quick seven or eight but nonetheless the, the dad passed away there in the accident they had uh, a son the oldest son also passed away in the accident the younger son passed away in the accident the mother was injured very uh, severely one of the other daughters was injured severely uh, there might have been another child or two I, I'm trying to remember my mind but at the end of the day there was one daughter that was not with them she was a college student she was at college and she gets a phone call daddy's di died died your brothers have died. Mama and sister are really broken up and injured, and you need to get to Texas right away. Can you imagine a 20-year-old college student getting that phone call? And I remember uh, Brother Davis, the youth pastor, and his wife, uh, they, they took this young lady. They caught the quickest flight they could to Texas and had to walk through that hospital to, to see her mama and I believe, if the story is correct, break the news to her mama of what was going on. That's difficult. Naomi lost her sons, lost her husband. Difficult news. Matter of fact, it was so difficult, we read that uh, she became a bitter person. She lost her pleasantness about her. We understand that she used to love the Lord. She got away from God. She was down in Moab in the world and the Bible says that she changed her name to Mara in verse number 20, which literally means bitter. 
She says, I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again, again empty. Not only did she lose these things, but she lost her faith that the Lord wanted to bless her life. She had given up hope. Uh, she said, why? Uh, she said in verse 21, Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? You know, when someone loses faith in the Lord, that's a difficult situation to help out with. It's very difficult. Um, when they get so discouraged and so to the bottom of the barrel, it's hard to help them. But at least she went back to Bethlehem, and the Bible says that when she came back, she came back empty, defeated, discouraged, and a bitter widow. She had a pretty difficult past. But now I want to look at her present. Look at the things that have happened in this story. Uh, she, she is a, a great example of the Lord uh, forgiving his children, the Lord giving a brand new start. Aren't you thankful that the Lord gives uh, a, start, a new start to us over and over and over again? She went back to the promised land. She went back home, and the Lord gave her a new start. You see, I believe that she began to realize here in the present workings that Romans 8, 28 is true, that the Lord will work all things together for His good to those that love Him and are called according to His purpose. She began to see that God is, here's a good word to hold on to, God is a providential God. God knows all things. I mean, that's saying it encouraging thing for me uh, in our day and time in our society that nothing takes God by surprise and God can take anything that he wants to and work it out for his good if we'll just keep our faith in him Ruth's daughter-in-law Ruth paints a beautiful picture and a good picture for us to be reminded of of a excited new convert that has a strong faith you know that's a great thing isn't it a young christian that has just been saved and we often say this they just don't know any better yet hey listen let's just not tell them either amen let's just let them think this is the way it is I love the excitement of a new Christian. I tell you what it'd do good for churches to get new Christians in. Oh, it'd do good for me. It'd do good for you to see that new excitement, to see that person that just doesn't have it all figured out, but they're excited, their faith is strong, and they're ready to do something for God. That was Ruth. She was excited. We understand she was a new Christian. She hadn't been saved that long. She was from the world. She was from Moab. But I believe she had gotten saved, and we looked at that earlier. And now she has a willingness to put her faith to work in the Lord. She had the faith, as we read in chapter 2 and verse number 2, that, uh, that she would find grace, or that someone would let her to gather the harvest that was left behind in the field. Naomi has an encouraging attitude. We're just talking about the present things now. She got a new start. Naomi saw God in heaven as providential. She saw her daughter-in-law excited, and guess what? All of a sudden now, Naomi begins to change a little bit. She was bitter in chapter 1, but all of a sudden she says to Ruth here in verse number 2, she said, go ahead, Ruth. You know what? That is right. She began to encourage her, and she said, Why don't you go and see if you can find that field and that place where you can gather the harvest? She said, Go, my daughter. She could have told Ruth that her faith was foolish and that her efforts would be a waste of time. She could have said that. She was in a bad place in her life. She was bitter. She was upset at the Lord. She said, Lord, why did you let this happen to me? She says, I went out full. Now I'm empty. 
You know, I just want to say this tonight. Praise the Lord for people who encourage others to do what God has laid on their heart. Praise the Lord. Now listen, we don't find that Naomi went out there with her. We find that she stayed back. Now, she probably should have went with her, but at least she didn't discourage her. Hey, listen, tonight, uh, as we live the Christian life, let's be careful we don't ever get to that point where we say, I've been there, done that, and it doesn't work. Or it works some of the time. If there's an excited young Christian convert that is ready to go out and, and uh, knock on every door in town, don't give them all the statistics and say, you know, that uh, you'll only talk to one person out of every ten doors. And out of every person you talk to, it takes ten people to talk to you for one to even come to church. That's pretty discouraging. That's like a one percent chance uh, that I'll knock on somebody's door. Don't be that wet blank. Hey, say, let's, let's do it and be excited that they're being faithful about doing what they are uh, uh, instructed of the Lord to do. Praise the Lord for Naomi that even though she wasn't there in her heart, she said, Ruth, you go ahead. You go out there and do what God has uh, uh, challenged you to do. We see Naomi's heart and her outlook are beginning to change. You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, there are times when we as Christians, we go on a spiritual diet, so to speak. And we'll go for weeks upon weeks and months upon months of dieting spiritually. And all of a sudden we forget what Psalm says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's been so long since we tasted of the goodness of the Lord. It's been so long since we saw uh, the, the results that God can bring and God can give. And all of a sudden, we forget what it's like. I've heard people say that uh, when you go on a diet for so long and maybe you cut something out, y- your taste kind of changes a little bit. You forget how something tasted and maybe there's something that uh, that, that, that you liked and, and maybe now that you're eating healthier and, and you've been on a diet for a long time you go back uh, to I remember one time a few years ago I did that and I hadn't eaten fast food in a long time I I'd, I'd really tried to stay away from it and then after several months I believe it was about six months I said well I'm going to go ahead and, and get me a uh, a quarter pounder again you know it really didn't taste that good I wasn't used to it I was used to all the healthy foods Uh, but praise God I got over that now I'm back to quarter pounders and man they're good no I'm a double cheeseburger guy from McDonald's that's my go to sandwich but listen let's not get that way in our Christian life that we forget that the wonderful blessings of God sure are good to taste I believe Naomi is starting to see that again. Her outlook is beginning to change, and her heart is beginning to change. I want you to turn with me to Galatians chapter 4. I believe we're starting to see the effect that Ruth was having on her mother-in-law. We're seeing the effect of a young Christian And there is zeal and excitement for the Lord, the effect that that can have on others. Galatians chapter 4, verse number 19, or verse number 18. Notice what the Bible says. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. Do you understand what Paul is saying to the church here? He said, it's a good thing to be zealous for the Lord. He said, it's good to get excited about things that are good. Hey, it's all right to say, let's go do it. Let's go out here and, uh, as they used to say, charge hell with a squirt gun. I am going to just give myself to the Lord. I'm going to be excited. Paul says, that's a good thing to do, even though when I'm not with you. 
It's good to keep on going. You know, that's an encouraging thing to the preacher. When he hears good reports and hears so-and-so uh, this week and they've went out and they've done this and helped this person and get the gospel out here and, and hey, somebody got saved here. And, and when the preacher's gone, he can call back and say, how did church go? And say, hey, preacher, uh, we had a good crowd even though you were gone. Hey, that's a good thing to be zealous for the Lord even when the preacher's not around. We see in 2 Corinthians, let's turn there in chapter 9, just a few pages over. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, Paul says, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. What a great testimony that Paul could write to them and say, Hey, listen, because of you, because of your excitement, you'll never know how many people you affected. You helped to stir somebody up. You helped to get their batteries charged up. Boy, I like that. I like to uh, read our mission letters. I like to talk to our missionaries. I uh, uh, video uh, chatted with one of our missionaries today in the Philippines, Brother Bobby Matoto. I called him up and said, hey, brother, how you doing? And boy, I love the technology. We can sit there and, and look at each other and talk to him. I didn't know what time it was. I just forgot to do the uh, math. I knew they weren't the same time. And so I called him. It was uh, a lunch about uh, 12 o'clock here around lunchtime. I called him up, and uh, he said, it's midnight here. I said, well, you're the one that called me back. I didn't make you a call. No, we had a good talk. We talked for about 15 minutes. And, uh, boy, they're just getting the job done. You ought to read their newsletter. He, he sends me updates through Facebook Messenger. And uh, all, every single Sunday he sends a report. And they're seeing people saved and saved. Uh, he has a jail ministry. You know what they do in the prison there, the jail? He can't go in because of COVID right now. They set up the video screen. And he gets on his phone and he preaches to those inmates and people get saved. Man, that's a blessing. Uh, just getting the job done. You know what that has done? That's encouraged me. His zeal in the Philippines has encouraged me here in Missouri. Be encouraged by the zeal others have for the Lord. You know, sometimes we let others' zeal discourage us. We're not careful. We say things like this. Well, I wish I could do that. How, how come, you know, I always hear of other people doing this. I can't ever seem to get anything done. Let's be encouraged. Uh, and then you be an encouragement to others with your own zeal. You know, I've got to be careful. The attitude that I have in my life affects so many people I don't realize. My own family. Oh, listen, if I'm not careful, I can have an attitude that would affect them negatively, maybe toward the things of the Lord, toward the church. Oh, that's why I'm so careful as a pastor. Listen, it's easy to want to maybe speak of the negative things all the time. But what good is that going to do? Cause my kids to have a negative outlook on life? Hey, listen, there is no perfect life, is there? So let's uh, be careful that we don't impact others in the wrong way. Uh, so be an encouragement to others and realize God uses people to help other people. Now, uh, let's quickly look at Naomi's future. We saw her past. It wasn't very good. Lots of heartaches, lots of burdens. We see her present, that now she's beginning to be encouraged a little bit by her uh, newborn uh, in the Lord daughter-in-law, just a new Christian. We see her beginning to have hope. Now let's look at her future. And that's where we started off this evening in Ruth chapter 2, verse number 17. When she saw the food that Ruth brought home, she said, Ruth, where'd you get that food today? 
She said, what field did you work in today? I don't know if she, in the back of her mind, was hoping for that kinsman redeemer. We understand that Ruth and Boaz met earlier in chapter 2. But nonetheless, she said, where were you at today, Ruth? And the Bible says that she prayed in verse number 19. Uh, she said, uh, whoever it was that let you glean in their field, Ruth, I pray that, you, that, that they would be blessed. She said, blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. You see, Naomi <clears throat> knew that Ruth was blessed. She knew that God was with her. She knew that God was going to take care of her. Uh, Naomi knew that not only was Ruth blessed, but that she herself was blessed to have food to eat. You see, I believe now her outlook is beginning to change. As she was bitter and discouraged just a short time ago, uh, now we see her hope is that, you know what? I am blessed that I just have something to eat. I am blessed uh, because of my daughter-in-law. She said, I, I thank the Lord that I've got a daughter-in-law that is like you are, Ruth. And then when Naomi realized that the man was Boaz, look at verse number 19, the man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. Then she says in verse 20, Blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. You see, Naomi realized that this was the Boaz that she knew. And uh, she said that this is a close relative of ours. And she began to realize this is a miracle. She began to realize only God could do this. What an amazing picture of the Christian life. If we look at ourself and our situation and it seems hopeless, what we need to get back is hope. Ruth lost her husband, her two sons. She was bitter. She slowly begins to see some things working. And then you know what she says? Only God could do that. That's the way the Christian life, that's what hope is. My hope is, uh, we, we sing the, the song, I think we, we sang it just a few uh, services ago. Uh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. That's the only hope we have in this life. If we, if, if, if we don't have a hope and faith in Jesus Christ, we are miserable. That's all there is to it. We're miserable. Naomi began to see the things that God was working out. She said in verses 19 and 20, she knew that the Lord had uh, not shut off his kindness to her or to her husband, she said, to the living and to the dead. She, she realized that, you know what, maybe after all, God is a pretty good God. Remember what she said in chapter 1? I went out full and the Lord brought me home again empty. Why hath the Almighty afflicted me? And now she's beginning to see, oh, wait a minute. Uh, maybe God is okay after all. Uh, maybe he is still w willing and wanting to bless me. Ruth told Naomi that she was asked to return to the same field until the end of the harvest season. She said, I get to keep coming back. I don't have to go look for someplace else. They said, I can keep coming back to the same place over and over until the harvest is finished. And Naomi encouraged her in verse 22. She said, hey, you need to accept that invitation. Uh, you need to go back there and keep on doing. She said, it is good, my daughter. You see what happened is Naomi is now filled with hope. You say, what is hope? Here's what hope is. Hope is the expectation of good. That's what hope is. It is keep on trusting. Keep on, keep on hoping that everything's going to turn out okay. Uh, Naomi is beginning to accept the will of God. Now we have to understand this. 
the will of God is not always mountaintops. But if my hope is in the will of God, if my hope is in Him, you know what? Then it is good. Then the valleys are good. The, the rocky places in life, they are good. Uh, you know, what does the Bible say in Romans chapter number 12? The Lord's will is, He says, I have a good and acceptable and perfect will. God says, my will is good. I think sometimes we would chart our own path in life and we would leave out the bad places, wouldn't we? We would leave out the tough times. But all oh, listen, let's not do that. Because it's through those times that hopefully our faith grows, our hope grows in the Lord. So Naomi had a hope in the will of God and her future was bright because her hope was blessed. And we can understand that Christians have great hope as well. First of all, we have the hope of going to heaven because of Jesus. We have the blessed hope of the return of Christ to take us to heaven. Uh, we have a relationship with the God of hope, as the Bible says, to give us joy and peace through whatever comes our way until we get to heaven. Our hope comes from the Word of God. And then realizing that unsaved people are without hope. There is no hope. Now, let me close by making just a few observations here. And here's a good statement. Naomi's future was bright because her future was blessed. If we follow the Lord with our life, guess what? We've got a bright future. We've got a blessed future. I mean, I tell you what, uh, I'd rather have, I, I, you know, I hate to even say it this way. I'd rather have another year like 2020 as a Christian than to have the best year that the world could ever give and be lost without Christ. Oh, it's not been a fun year. It would be, would be silly to say it's been a fun year. But I tell you what, the Lord has helped us all along. And I can say tonight, I'm not stressed out about it. I'm going to go home in a little while, and I'm going to put my head down my pillow, and in about a half a second, I'll be asleep. I'm not going to stay up and stress and fret and worry. I'm not going to... I'm not going to keep on uh, the, the news channel all day long and try to see what's the latest things happening, you know. Do we have a vaccine yet? Is this presidential election over yet? I, I'm not going to do that. Why? My hope is not in that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I want to be informed, and I'll try to on purpose uh, go maybe once a day and check out some headlines and see what the news is and spend about five minutes on it. My hope's in Jesus. No matter if they have a vaccine or not, my job's still the same, folks. No matter if President Trump stays in office or if we have uh, President Biden, my job is the same. It doesn't change. I'm going to continue to pray like I've been praying all along. I'm going to continue to work like I've been trying to do all along. <laughs> Listen, my hope is in God. We have a bright future because our future is blessed. We ought to make sure that we enjoy our salvation that we have in Christ. Let's never get over the fact that we're under the blood. That ought to excite me every single day. I really mean that. I really do. There are people today that are lost without Christ. We know that. They have no hope. They have no hope. The hardest thing probably that I do in ministry one of the hardest things that I do is preach a funeral of someone that has no hope. Friend, listen, I cannot preach them into heaven. I sat in my office one day, and some folks come in to discuss the funeral that I was to preach. They said, preacher, do your best to preach them into heaven. Folks, there's a religion that teaches that. 
Now, what am I supposed to do? Say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. It's too late. Oh, I can't come out and say that. That would be very harsh. That would be very hard. And I say, you know what? I'm going to do my very best to have a, a good service and try to bring comfort. You know what I do? I go and preach Jesus. Give the gospel. Here's the only hope. And that mom and dad that were in my office both raised their hand at that funeral and said, I trusted Christ. You know, that's the hope that they can have. And let's never get over the fact that we're under the blood. And then let's make sure we enjoy a close relationship with the God of hope. Spend time in the Bible, our source of hope. And we're going to look next week at a beautiful love story. And we'll begin to uh, look at the courtship of Ruth and Boaz and the picture that it has, that kinsman redeemer and the Lord Jesus Christ loving us, the bride, and it's going to be, it's going to be good. Well, let's uh, pray, and then we'll transition to our prayer list tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this Bible study. And Lord, this word hope, uh, Lord, it's a great word. It's a great characteristic that we ought to have. And Lord, we pray that we could, uh, Lord, have the hope that we need in this life. And Lord, the zeal that we can have, and Lord, that it would affect others. And Lord, we just thank you for the truth that we've heard tonight. Bless now our prayer time, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll uh, look at these requests that were turned in tonight. And we can start marking up our new prayer list, if that's what you do. And uh, 